Hi everyone, today we're going to take a look at the steps a reviewer must go through when doing a double-blind peer review in an OJS3 journal. For reviewers who are just watching this one video here today, welcome! I hope you find the steps described here easy and straightforward. For the rest of you who are working your way through all of the videos in the course, you'll recall that we previously watched how the section editor assigned the peer reviewers. Now we're switching over to what the reviewers see. For this example, we'll follow Serena Curtis, who will work her way through the review steps. Serena received an email via OJS from the section editor inviting her to do the review, and she's decided to accept. So the first thing she needs to do is to log into the system using the username and password that was provided earlier. There's the login link and brings up the fields for logging in. Now, if she couldn't remember her password, she could hit the forgot your password link. She could put in her email and that would reset the password for her. If she's forgotten what her username is or if didn't remember what email was used, she'd need to contact the editor directly. We know what that is. We'll put in the password, hit login, and it immediately jumps her into the dashboard. There's a very limited view of the internal workings of OJS for a reviewer. As we can see on the sidebar over here on the left, there's no additional options. All we can see in her queue is her one assigned submission. Now, for some reason, she'd been assigned two different reviews. Those would both be listed here, but she just has the one to work with. If you look up at the top under tasks too, there's a little number one because she has a review pending. We can see that the response due date is March 10th. That's just the date by which she needs to let the editor know whether she'll do the review or not. And then she has another week after that to actually do the review. These dates could vary depending on what, how the journal has set up its own workflow. But for the sake of this uh, example, they're a week apart. We've also got a little warning sign here that the, the journal's waiting for us to let them know whether we'll do it or not. So let's click on that entry and we can see it's a pretty straightforward four-step process. Um, step one, the request for the review, we ask that you do it. There's the title, there's the abstract, and there's the review file. And if we click on that, it downloads that Word doc to our desktop. We can open it up, read it, decide whether we want to proceed with this or not. So the editor asked us on the 17th we need to say whether we'll do it or not by the 10th. We need to complete it by the 17th. That all looks good. Our options are to accept and go on to step two or to decline, but let's say yes, we're gonna do it. We can see some reviewer guidelines. The journals can all add whatever they think is most appropriate for helping you provide the kind of review they're looking for. Um, there might be some instructions on the kinds of responses they're looking for. So it's important to read through all these and make sure you understand um, what you're being asked to do and then continue on to step three. Again, there's another link to that file if you didn't grab it already. There's a link back to those reviewer guidelines if you want to refer back to it. But here are the two most important boxes, your review. In the first one, you can type in the review that's going to be visible to both the author and the editor. So make sure you don't name yourself or in any way, you know, make your identity known because you want to stick with the blind review process. This article looks good. You can imagine that you're gonna put something a bit more substantive in there, but that gives you an idea. And now the next box is just for the editor. The author will never see what goes in this so maybe you might want to be a bit more frank about some of your criticisms or some of your concerns. Now, if you are somebody who likes to mark up the Word doc using the track changes, you could do all of that and upload the file here. Just again, be sure that you make sure it's anonymous um, in case that gets shared, any of those um, files get shared back with the author. You want to make sure we're always preserving um, the anonymity of any files that are shared back and forth. We're not going to upload anything here. It's fine. And then we're asked to make our recommendation. And we've got a few choices. 
We think it should be accepted as is. Um, that's possible. It doesn't happen a lot, but it's possible. The next one is revisions are required. This typically means that you think that there's some minor changes that should be made, and you've outlined those in your comments above. Resubmit for review. That means that the idea is sound, but there are major changes that need to be made, and the changes are so big that it should come back for another round of review. Uh, resubmit elsewhere means that this looks like it's a good article, but doesn't really fit into the scope of this journal, in your opinion. Um, decline, if you think there's just no chance of this ever meeting the quality of this journal. Or see comments, if you just can't make up your mind and you want to send a message to the editor. We're going to just do revisions required. Submit our review. Are you sure? Now, once we hit OK, we can't go back. We can't change our recommendation. So you really want to be 100% sure. We'll say OK. And that's it. Our review's been submitted and we're done. So it wasn't that hard. Um, it took some of your intellectual effort to think about what was um, good about the article and where it could be strengthened and to be able to put that into words and communicate it. But once that's in place, it's very straightforward four-step process. Hopefully uh, you don't run into any problems and that's it. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.